Hello, and welcome to this Automation World podcast focused on the future of HMI SCADA technology, sponsored by Schneider Electric. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World. And you know, it's easy to look across the industrial world and see that many, if not most of the technologies that have been in use for the past 20 or more years are still in place. And yes, there have certainly been updates and upgrades and even a few shifts, most notably the increased use of Ethernet on the plant floor. But even in the face of such game-changing technology shifts as the Internet of Things, Industry 4.0, and smart manufacturing, the technologies that support these concepts and initiatives are still largely the tried-and-true motors, drives, controllers, sensors, and software that we've all known for years. And while these technologies may not be fundamentally changing before our eyes, they are undergoing a noticeable evolution through the addition of new features and capabilities that reflect changing industrial business requirements and the nature of modern work in the manufacturing and processing industries. And nowhere are these changes more evident than in HMI SCADA software. And this should really come as no surprise since HMI SCADA is the frontline interface between plant operators and the equipment they oversee. So for this podcast, looking at how HMI SCADA is changing in reaction to industry, business, and technological trends, I'm joined by Rob Kambach, G.K. Tay, John Krajewski, and Fabio Terrazino of Schneider Electric. So let's get into what's happening today with HMI SCADA. You know, with all that's occurred over the past decade with automation technology developments and the evolution of the manufacturing and processing industries, what do industrial end users today expect from their HMI SCADA systems? And what do you think they'll be expecting in the near-term future? I think the, the expectation more and more is that um, it's less and less a, a custom job, a custom manufactured thing that somebody has to create for them where a lot of effort is required to put that specific application together. Their expectation would be more that we enhance their operational effectiveness with the least amount of effort from their side. So that they're expecting from us to give them standards and frameworks out of the box that plug into their applications and make these applications work in context to, to basically achieve that they are um, um, out of an operational perspective, going to be more effective using our tools without having to put less effort into making it all work. Um, um, and that's really a goal that we have been working very, very hard on, is that um, to, to have uh, end users and users to put less effort into the systems to make it work the way they want it to work. Um, which, which is uh, um, today, and when you look at a lot of systems, it's a, it's a big challenge because there are so many technologies, technologies coming together at some point. Yeah, in today's world, I think HMI is about standardization, mm -hmm. right? In the past, uh, the OEM market to the control room, they just put in the HMI with all the custom build graphics, the, uh, the alarm, and so on and so forth. But today, is they want to look into the standard way, the standard templates of implementing all this alarm, all these graphics, the effective way of uh, driving the situational awareness to the operator, to the operations. So we have seen a lot of our customers coming to us, and they requested for a standardization, a standard way for them to develop a uh, solutions, a, a HMI, where they can take it from one application to another project. So standardization is one of the great expectations that we have seen, not just only from the system integrator, but also from the customer. Can you point to any specific end-user activities that you see driving these changes? I think another aspect is going to be point of access, where it's been very traditional for HMI and supervisor control software to be accessed either in control rooms or something wrapped in stainless steel or something along those natures. We're going to find more and more people wanting to access that in different roles, people that aren't part of operations, people that may be a part of scheduling or maintenance Thanks. or running the business or analytics. They're going to want to know more and more about the real-time systems in context to the other systems in the organization so they can facilitate making a decision. So ubiquitous access in a way that's natural. They don't want to use the screens that are designed for the operators if they're going to be doing scheduling. That's not going to be the same experience. So we have to provide tailored experiences to their roles. Right. And also I think HMI and especially SCADA control systems, the kind of products we are bringing to the market, uh, in the past they used to be a container for designs built with 
that particular tool, so it was very limited and closed. And now it's evolving away, it's more a container for native information, but also for information and interfaces from other systems. So you can combine information from the ERP system, from the HMI, from controllers, uh, videos, databases, documents from different uh, systems, and have a portal per se, where you can consume this information and put all this information under context. Considering this evolving and growing role for HMI SCADA that you all see, how does this affect or how is it affected by the IT and operations technology used by industry to connect enterprise and plant floor systems? Well, the conversion between IT and OT, again, is not a milestone, it's a process, right, and a trend that is becoming more and more important in the industry. And the main reason for that is because it brings value to the customer, right? Uh, integrating IT business, uh, global supply chain information with the manufacturing uh, process uh, brings competitive advantage, right? You can uh, provide pulled information kind of instead of pushed information, uh, scale better your assets, use your assets in a better way, set expectations to end users in, in a more transparent way. So it brings value to the business and competitive advantages. Uh, and in the past, we had technological uh, constraints to make this integration in real time, but those constraints now are virtually gone. So it's just a matter to uh, use the tools and the technologies that we have been deploying and we have been bringing to the market, uh, allowing users to interface their IT with OT processes in an easy way, a feasible way, and more importantly, in a uh, sustainable way. We are talking about extensibility. So again, is the, the whole idea that we provide the tools that provide a solution today, but in the future, as requirements improve, they can build on top of that, not having to throw away all the investment they made on the original project. Being able to make take advantage of this is not an if, it's a when. This is definitely going to happen. And as we start seeing more and more of our customers who are starting to change their organizations to be able to facilitate this, so it's to where they used to have the IT people and the OT people kind of butting heads and not being able to see. So now what happened is that they're now formed into the single operational organization. So now you both have to work together because you're reported up to the same organization. Um, so ultimately, we see our customers changing their internal structures to be able to accomplish this. And so as then, right now, they may not have a full vision of how they're going to execute this or what they're going to do, but they're definitely working in that step. And that, that direction. Are end users asking for anything specific from you when it comes to the bridging of IT and OT using HMI SCADA? Yeah, from from the um, from the uh, IT perspective and from the operation perspective, we have a lot of customers coming to us that they want to be able to respond to an event, to, to a breakdown of a machines. And how is that breakdown going to impact on the production? How is that breakdown is going to impact on the on the cost? Uh, of maintenance and so on and so forth. So those informations will be coming from the IT system, the maintenance system, the SAP system, and so on and so forth. So all this will be driven uh, based upon the operational data, the alarm, the events, uh, the, 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 the signals that we picked up. So from all these things that uh, the operation side, the, uh, the platform side, will be able to integrate with the IT system all right, in the seamlessly, so we will be able to drive all this response timely to the operations. In plants, very often the manufacturing part compared to the operational side, um, it, they're mostly firewalled and, and separated from each other. But more and more there is a demand for transparency. So transparency from a business perspective to be able to see what's going on in the plant at any time, but also the other way around, what's going on in the IT systems at any time. So both of these worlds are now unified in, in a typical data center and within one, within one stack of, of, of equipment. Um, so now more and more there is a demand of like, oh, well, you have those databases, so I want the data, right? So um, uh, so that's where, where all this is coming from, that a lot of the OT space used to be a very shielded off part somewhere in the corner of the plant and now it's all part of the IT infrastructure um, and, and now there is a, a basically a demand for transparency yeah. and we need to provide it in a very agnostic and holistic manner. Right and the tools are also evolving providing new capabilities for instance in the past OT was really focused on a tactical approach so keep the process running, keep the machine running as fast as possible, minimize downtime and so on. 
Uh, but now with the integration with IT, we can collect all this data, keep OT focused on, on uh, performance uh, from a tactical point of view, but collecting those, all this data, sharing this data with IT, we can now provide accurate information uh, to business leaders, to different stakeholders that can take a holistic view about what is actually happening and take strategic decisions, right? To improve productivity, to expand, to reduce, to, to make investments in different areas, which in the past was not, they were not able to make those decisions based on solid, accurate data. It was much more about guesses or gut feelings than in real time, accurate information. And I think that's going to also drive a change in the way people even look at the resources. Where I think the operations staff for a long amount of time has been seen as kind of labor resources, I think now they're going to be asked to make more decisions and they're going to need to be empowered to make those frontline decisions. Because when, when are you going to have the best opportunity to improve the profitability? In a quarterly review in the boardroom or right in the right as things are happening right next to the equipment? I yeah. think that empowering the people with the ability to make those decisions and understand the intents of the organizations and how you can make the right decision to provide the expected outcome outcomes, this is all going to be necessary to make that happen. Well, thank you, John, Rob, GK, and Fabio, and thank you for joining us. If you would like more information, please visit the website shown here.